Welcome to Literary Insights. This is the summary of the book Spare by Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Prince Harry had a difficult time writing letters to his divorced parents as a child. After his mother died, he regretted not expressing his love for her in his final letter to her. Prince Harry went on a trip to South Africa with his father, who wanted publicity. At a Spice Girls concert, journalists bombarded Prince Harry, though he was glad to spend time with his usually absent father. Prince Harry and his father listened to a historian describe the Anglo-Zulu War. Though too young to fully understand, Prince Harry was inspired by stories of courage and British power. The trip brought Prince Harry closer to his father, though little changed in their relationship afterwards. Prince Harry had a difficult childhood. His parents divorced when he was young, and his mother disappeared from his life. Though his father took him on trips, their relationship remained strained. As a teen, Prince Harry struggled at Eton College. He had trouble making friends and adjusting to the rigorous rules and traditions. He turned to sports and sometimes skipped school to cope. The media frequently labeled Prince Harry as the naughty one in the royal family and mocked him in exaggerated stories. He found their treatment of him and his family unethical and upsetting. On a trip to Botswana, Prince Harry planned a prank on one of the guides, Marco, but was stopped when a leopard appeared, scaring the group. Prince Harry felt a connection with the wildlife in Africa. The guides warned him of the dangers in the area, like crocodiles and hippos. As a child, Prince Harry went on violent hunting trips with various adults, including fights with other boys that led to injuries. His first kill was a rabbit, and its blood was smeared on his face as part of a blooding ritual. At 15, he killed a stag and was covered in its blood and organs as another blooding. Prince Harry believed properly managing deer populations and providing food were good reasons for hunting. But his upbringing involving killing from a young age was disturbing and reflected a desire to please the abusive adults around him. The summary covers the essential details of Prince Harry's difficult childhood and upbringing, struggles at school, encounters with the media, experiences in Botswana, and participation in violent hunting trips and rituals. The key ideas around his strained family relationships, challenges fitting in, and disturbing normalization of killing are conveyed. Prince Harry, Prince Harry, spent nine weeks working on a cattle station in Australia owned by a family called the Hills. He loved the hard work and simplicity of the life. He bonded with the son, George, and earned the nickname Spike. Harry had to leave abruptly when paparazzi started sneaking onto the farm. He didn't want the paparazzi to disrupt the Hill family's privacy. Upon returning home, Harry went out to clubs, thinking the paparazzi didn't know he was back yet. However, they spotted him leaving a club one night with a young woman. The next day, paparazzi nearly caused a car accident trying to get photos of him. The media focused on the fact that the woman was a page three girl who posed topless in tabloids. They claimed Harry's association with her proved he lacked judgment. The tabloid coverage embarrassed and upset Harry. He realized going out to clubs after his return attracted too much attention. He decided to spend the next few months preparing to join the army, avoiding the spotlight as much as possible. Overall, the passage shows how Harry struggled with lack of privacy due to constant media interest in his personal life. His time in Australia provided an escape, but upon returning home the paparazzi and tabloids were eager to scrutinize his every move. To avoid further embarrassment, Harry chose to lay low for the next few months. Does this summary accurately reflect the key details and events described in the passage? Let me know if you would like me to clarify or expand on any part of the summary. Prince Harry felt relieved to escape the paparazzi and public scrutiny in England. He went to Lesotho for a gap year and invited his Australian friend George to join. In Lesotho, Harry did volunteer work and gave his first solo interview, speaking about his mother's death and recent scandals. He then traveled to Cape Town, South Africa with George. On impulse in Cape Town, Harry called Chelsea, a woman he'd met years earlier. They rekindled their connection, bonding over a love of Africa. Harry invited Chelsea and others on a trip to Botswana. In Botswana, the group went on a safari. Harry and Chelsea shared their first kiss. Harry also connected with wildlife filmmakers Tej and Mike. 
Harry attended his father Prince Charles's wedding to Camilla Parker Bowles in 2005. Though it was bittersweet, the wedding provided closure. Around this time, Harry seriously injured his knee, delaying his army training. Harry caused controversy by wearing a Nazi uniform to a costume party. He felt ashamed but received comfort from Prince Charles. Harry began training at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. The intense training focused on death and combat. Despite the hardship, Harry embraced it as a privilege. However, witnessing a heatstroke victim made him realize the dangers. In early 2007, Harry was deployed to Iraq but the deployment was cancelled after two months due to threats from insurgents. Harry was disappointed to leave his team but understood. He questioned whether his role as a royal would prevent military service but was determined to find a way. Harry considered quitting the military after being pulled from deployment in Afghanistan but his brother William and Chelsea convinced him to continue serving. The summary outlines the key events, details, relationships, experiences, and emotions described in the passages on Prince Harry's young adulthood, military training, and early romantic relationship with Chelsea Davy. Prince Harry, revealed to be Prince Harry, serves as part of a squadron on patrol in Afghanistan near Musakala. One night while monitoring the radio, he overhears that someone with the call sign Red Fox needs to be urgently extracted. He realizes with shock that Red Fox is himself. The next day, Harry goes out on patrol but is paranoid that his cover has been blown. That night, special forces extract him by helicopter and take him to a forward operating base. There, his commanding officer informs him that his cover has indeed been blown due to an Australian magazine article revealing his presence in Afghanistan. For safety reasons, Harry is being pulled out of Afghanistan immediately. Within an hour, Harry is transported back to Kandahar airfield. His tour of duty has ended abruptly in order to ensure his safety and the safety of those around him now that it is known he was there. The key events are 1. Harry overhears radio chatter indicating that Red Fox, his own call sign, needs to be extracted urgently. 2. Harry's cover is blown due to an Australian magazine article revealing he was serving in Afghanistan. 3. For safety reasons, Harry is quickly pulled out of Afghanistan and his tour ends early. Here's a summary of the key details and events. Prince Harry, presumably Prince Harry, receives his wings in the Army Air Corps and prepares to deploy to Afghanistan. Before leaving, he visits Lesotho with Prince William and is inspired by the resilience of students there. William announces his engagement to Kate Middleton. Prince Harry reflects on being single but finds purpose in his military service and charitable work. He's invited to join wounded soldiers on a trek to the North Pole to raise money, though it's close to William's wedding. His mentor advises him to go, calling it a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Prince Harry visits Berlin and sees remnants of the Nazi regime. He meets a Holocaust survivor, reinforcing why he's fighting in Afghanistan. He decides to join the North Pole trek, hoping to make William's wedding. Prince Harry flies to Svalbard to join the trek. The harsh conditions cause frostnip. Before leaving, he has dinner with William, who is nervous for his wedding. William's friends have him drink to calm down. William insists on greeting crowds outside. Prince Harry supports him. The summary covers Prince Harry finding purpose through service in 2010 despite relationship troubles. It depicts his difficult North Pole trek and support of Prince William before William's wedding. Overall, it shows Prince Harry's commitment to charitable causes and his brother's well-being. Prince Harry is deployed to Afghanistan as a captain and Apache helicopter co-pilot. Shortly after arriving at the base, it comes under attack by the Taliban on Prince Harry's birthday. Two American soldiers are killed, though Prince Harry is unharmed. The Taliban claim they attack specifically to target Prince Harry, though he doubts this. To distract himself, Prince Harry throws himself into his work, going on call for two days and then standing by on alert for three days waiting for missions. He stays with his co-pilot Dave and two others in a tent waiting for missions. Dave is an experienced pilot on his third tour. Prince Harry loves flying the Apache helicopters, which can fly very fast and low to the ground. Their missions often involve searching for hours over a wide area for Taliban forces. One night, Prince Harry and Dave get a mission to check on a control point that came under fire. 
They spot eight men leaving the area and get permission to fire flechette rockets at them. The summary ends just as Prince Harry is about to fire at the men. Overall, the summary depicts Prince Harry's experiences serving as an Apache co-pilot in Afghanistan, coming under attack shortly after arriving but persevering to go on missions, typically with his co-pilot Dave. The vignette ends just as they are about to engage the enemy, building suspense about the outcome. Prince Harry, Prince Harry, struggles with anxiety and panic attacks, especially when giving speeches. After a difficult speech at We Day, his girlfriend Cressida comforts him. Photos of them at the event reveal their relationship of two years. Harry and Cressida go on a skiing holiday with friends in Kazakhstan. Skiing trips are meaningful for them, especially after Cressida got Harry to open up about his mother's death on an earlier trip. One night, Cressida gently asks Harry about his mother. For some reason, Harry opens up to Cressida about grief over his mother's death 17 years ago and starts crying. The summary covers the key details around Harry's speech anxiety, the outing of his relationship with Cressida, the meaningfulness of their skiing holidays, and Harry opening up to Cressida about his grief over his mother's death after many years of holding it in. Overall, the summary depicts Prince Harry's anxiety, his meaningful relationship with Cressida, and a pivotal moment of emotional vulnerability and openness with her regarding his long-suppressed grief over his mother's passing. Prince Harry is anxious and lonely, struggling with the pressures of royal life and public scrutiny. He finds solace visiting friends in Botswana and going on a conservation trip to Africa. Prince Harry meets Cressida, an actress and activist, through Instagram and is instantly attracted to her warmth, joy, and zest for life. They connect over two dates, though he struggles to process her beauty. He sees their meeting on his mother's birthday as a sign of destiny. Though from very different backgrounds, Prince Harry and Cressida bond over a shared desire for adventure, freedom, and purpose. Cressida embodies the order and beauty Prince Harry has long craved amid chaos. He is drawn to her confidence and playfulness. On a trip to Necker Island, Prince Harry opens up to Cressida about his grief over his mother's death, which he has long suppressed. Cressida listens and comforts him, allowing him to find catharsis through connecting with her. This pivotal moment of vulnerability and sharing deepens their relationship. Overall, the summary shows Prince Harry finding meaning, purpose, and emotional openness through his relationship with Cressida after a period of difficulty, loneliness, and unprocessed grief. She helps him emerge from darkness into light. Prince Harry, Prince Harry, is seeing a therapist to address feelings of anxiety, anger, and unresolved grief over his mother's death. He has panic attacks and directs rage at his girlfriend Meghan. Harry's memories of his mother are vague. He mainly feels her absence and wants the therapist's help to cry and release emotion. The therapist says Harry's anger seems connected to witnessing Diana's death as a child. Harry complains about media cruelty but the therapist says he seems stuck in the past. His anger resembles his 12-year-old self's. After an intense session, Harry wishes to go outside but knows it would cause a scene. They discuss surrogate mothers like Tiggy Legberg. Harry feels guilt relying on them and worries what Diana would think. Overall, Harry is working to confront painful emotions and move on from being that bereaved little boy. Though it's difficult, he hopes to find peace. Harry and Meghan wanted to start a family soon after their wedding despite their demanding schedules and stressful lives. They were worried the stress might prevent pregnancy. An Ayurvedic doctor advised Meghan to gain five pounds to increase her fertility. She did and they hoped she would get pregnant. While visiting Meghan's father, they learned Meghan's birthday was the same as her grandmother's favorite person's birthday. Her father told them stories of selkies, mythological Scottish creatures that grant wishes. Harry and Meghan saw seals at the beach and sang to them as her father suggested. Harry swam out to the seals, worrying their chef that killer whales might attack. But Harry saw it as a good sign. Meghan took two home pregnancy tests and they were both positive. She was pregnant. They felt overjoyed, believing the Selkies and Harry's late mother, Princess Diana, had helped them. Harry's cousin was getting married. Harry and Meghan delayed their tour to attend the wedding and tell family members about the pregnancy. Meghan's father and Prince William reacted supportively. In summary, after hoping and taking steps toward pregnancy, Harry and Meghan found out they were expecting their first child. 
They felt a special connection to mythological creatures and Harry's late mother in achieving this joyous news and milestone. Their families were happy for them as well. Harry and Meghan want more freedom and independence from the demands of royal life and cruel British press coverage. They draft a carefully worded statement to announce they will step back as senior royals and split their time between the UK and North America. However, their statement is preempted by a news report on their plans. Harry attends a tense family meeting at Sandringham to discuss the situation. Meghan remains in Canada with their baby son. Harry expresses frustration with the racist and unfair media coverage they have faced. He says the royal family has fueled this by relying on the media. William complains Harry and Meghan's handling of the announcement made him look unprofessional in his own royal role. The Queen is upset by Harry and Meghan's actions and desires a more gradual transition. But she accepts their wishes for independence. Negotiations begin to determine how they can forge a new progressive role within the royal family. Harry returns to Canada and reunites with Meghan. They feel relieved to escape the drama and toxicity surrounding them in Britain. But uncertainty remains over their future role and relationship with the royal family. The summary highlights Harry and Meghan's deep unhappiness with their current situation, desire to step away from senior royal life, tense family dynamics around their decision, and the beginning of difficult negotiations to establish a progressive new role for them going forward. Though escaping to Canada brings relief, much remains unsettled. Here is a summary of the information. Prince Harry felt manipulated and bullied by the royal family into accepting the option to step back from their royal roles. A meeting was held under the guise of discussing options but in reality, a statement announcing they would leave had already been drafted. Prince Harry fell blindsided and upset. Prince Harry and his wife Meg faced security issues and lacked protection. They stayed in Tyler Perry's safe house for six weeks but had to leave due to media attention. Prince Harry's father cut him off financially, leaving them struggling. Meg had a miscarriage from the stress. On Christmas, their son Archie broke an ornament of the Queen which they found amusing. The palace stripped their royal roles but they pushed back saying they would always serve. The palace's actions led to more attacks. Harry asked to lay a wreath, but was denied. A woman said Diana was proud of him, referencing the broken ornament. After Prince Philip's funeral, Harry walked with William and Charles. Charles said to endure press criticism. Harry said it would take longer to forgive enabling the press. Charles had called Meg a bully. Meg gave birth to their daughter. Prince Harry helped deliver her and was struck by the intensity. Meg wrote lovingly of him in her journal, calling him everything and a man, not a spare. The epilogue suggests they lived happily as a family of four. Prince Harry and Meg visited his mother's grave on the 25th anniversary of her death. The Queen passed away shortly after. Prince Harry attended funeral events, wishing for one more goodbye. A hummingbird in their house made him think of his grandmother. The passage focuses on loss, grief and remembrance. The acknowledgments thank many who helped research, write and publish the memoir including editors, friends, colleagues and family who supported and sacrificed.